Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. This is March the 1st, 2020. Today, I am making a celebration dinner because I've got a couple of things that uh, I'm celebrating or will be celebrating. Well, one of them is uh, I got a birthday coming up. My birthday is, is on Friday the 13th. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, my birthday is March 13th, and I will be uh, 41. It's hard to believe that I'm in my 40s. I don't feel like it, but I am in my 40s. And uh, I'm going to make a special announcement uh, getting close to my birthday, uh, something that I'm going to get for myself. And uh, it has to do with them songs that uh, I've written over the years. So I want you to stay tuned for that as I make my special announcement. But let's get to cooking. Welcome back. As I said, I'm celebrating early. I've got a birthday coming up, and one of my favorite things to make, but it's one of my least favorites to eat, is meatloaf. And I know that is very, very ironic. Uh, I've never been a big fan of meatloaf, but I love making meatloaf. And uh, it has to be fixed right, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, the good Lord Heaven Above has helped me to uh, come up uh, with, a, with a recipe of my own that I've been cooking for uh, several years. And uh, I, you've seen me make uh, meatloaf time and time again, but it's worth watching uh, time and time again. So, uh, I'll start off with two pounds of beef. Now, if you don't like beef, uh, you can use ground turkey. And I'll tell you what, I love turkey meatloaf. It is much better than using beef. Now, uh, to this, I'm gonna add two eggs. Two eggs. Use a large bowl like this, and uh, it'll make your life a lot easier when you start to stir it. Now, I'm going to add a few more things here. I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce. Now, I never can get the pronunciation right, but that's okay because I love Worcestershire sauce and meatloaf. It just brings out the flavor. Okay, some spices. Got some onion powder here. And you know me, I'm a big fan of using onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning. Now I got garlic powder here. Now, you can get those uh, meatloaf uh, spice mixes that's together in an envelope, but they got chemicals and stuff in it, uh, and I don't like that. And that's why I use these uh, separate Italian seasoning. make this any way that you want it. You can make a cheeseburger meatloaf, turkey meatloaf, whatever. Black pepper. You can make an Italian style salt. You want to use probably about a tablespoon of salt. Maybe a couple teaspoons, less than that. Okay, now Ketchup. Now, you know I like a lot of ketchup in my meatloaf. I like mixing the ketchup and all the seasoning and the egg first. To me, it just uh, does a lot better. I tell you what, when I came, when I was a kid, mom made meatloaf. Now you want to use clean hands, but when I was a kid, mom made meatloaf, and I tell you what, the smell of meatloaf just about made me sick. And uh, I never had cared too much about meatloaf, but you know I love to make it, and uh, it smells good. So it, it, it's funny how your uh, your Taste buds change over the years. If you catch my drift, all right. You would not want to overdo this. Okay, this is ready. Now, I'm going to use some quick oats. You can get 
this at the grocery store. Quick oats. Okay. You'd be surprised what that will do in a meatloaf. Probably about a half a cup. That's all you need. And then some dry breadcrumbs. Now you can use Italian style, uh, but I've got the plain breadcrumbs. You can find these where you find your flour and sugar. Down the flour and sugar aisle. Now, I start off with a little, then I add more. About a half cup or so of oats, and about a cup of uh, breadcrumbs. And sometimes I like to put just a little bit more ketchup in here because I love ketchup and meatloaf. Everybody in my house loves meatloaf. I can eat it. Alright, there we go. Ready to go. Let me add just a little bit more breadcrumbs. Okay, it's ready to be turned out on the pan. I got this sheet pan here uh, that I brushed with olive oil. Well, actually, first you can tell that I put parchment paper down so it won't get stuck. And then I brush the parchment paper with olive oil. Now, you can shape these. You can shape your meatloaf into a couple of big loaves or one big loaf. Totally up to you. I got enough to make two. I'm going to do something very different on the top. This other part here. So we're going to make it a barbecue style meatloaf. How's that? Now, very important after you handle any type of raw meat, whether it be chicken, pork chops, hamburger meat, whatever, make sure that you wash your hands to prevent cross contamination. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to get a couple of things together. Uh, to go on the top, so don't you stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Uh, as you can tell, uh, this is ready to go in the oven, but before it goes into the oven, uh, I'm going to uh, put a, a, a topping on here. Now, in this bowl, I've got some ketchup, and i got some brown sugar, and just a tiny bit of mustard, and I'm going to whisk this. Let me try it. See, because I don't want to overpower it with the mustard. That's, that's just right. Okay. I'm going to pour it on there. You can tell we like a lot of ketchup on our meatloaf, so I'm going to put a lot of this sauce on here. Mm. That looks good, don't it? But we can't eat it until an hour and 
15 minutes because that's how long it's going to cook. 375 degrees, 1 hour, 15 minutes. So, this is going to go in the oven, and while that's cooking, I'm going to be cooking a couple of more things. So, I want you to stay tuned for our celebration dinner. Alright everybody, welcome back. My meatloaf is just about 30 minutes away from being done. I've got some potatoes up here. I'm making mashed potatoes. And you've already seen me make mashed potatoes all, uh, over and over again. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to make some mac and cheese. It's been a while since I've made mac and cheese. Uh, first of all, I've got a couple of tablespoons of flour and a couple of tablespoons of uh, butter in here. You want to use unsalted butter. You don't want to use the real thing, by the way. And uh, this is... <coughs> Just like making gravy and biscuits, this is called a roux. And you want to let this cook for about a minute or so to get rid of the flour taste because you sure don't want to eat raw flour if you catch my drift. Now, uh, I'm going to add, I think I'm going to wait on that for just a minute. I got a couple spices that I want to add in here, uh, but I'm going to wait until I get my milk in. See, it doesn't take long for that to uh, do, okay. All right. See, it doesn't take long at all. So, I'm going to add, let me get my measuring cup out. Probably about a cup and a half of milk. This is a one half cup measure, so that's one, two, three. How's that? Put that to the side. Now I'm going to add, you'd be surprised what nutmeg will do in a sauce like this. About a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Then I'm going to add some onion powder and garlic powder. Now I'm not going to add salt in here because by the time I add all the cheddar cheese in here, it's going to be salty enough. That was garlic powder by the way. And onion powder. Okay. Now, you want to stir this until it just about thickens. When it does, I'm going to add some cheese in here. Now, I opened up those bars of cheese that you get, two of them. Uh, I might not need all of them. Uh, I might not need both of them for, for this. So whatever I don't use, uh, I'm going to put a Ziploc bag and save the later. You see how that is coming uh, very nicely? And that is what you want. Okay. Almost like making gravy. Perfect. Now, let me turn this seat down on low. Now. I'm going to add some of this cheese in here. Okay. I'm going to see what this does. I think some black pepper would be good in here. So before I add anything else, I'll put some black pepper. About that much. How's that? See how it is thickening up very nicely and that is what you want. So I think I will add four cups of cheddar cheese. Now, by the way, I'll shred it myself, like I said. Okay. Mmm. 
Now flats look good. Okay, now I'm going to add eight ounces of macaroni. Now I'm using the shells, the tiny shells right there. That's what I'm using. Dump all of it out here at once. Okay. And if it's if this is a little bit too dry for you, just add a little bit more milk. And I think I might just do that. Okay, there we go. Now, you could put this in an oven uh, for about thirty for about twenty-five minutes or so on three fifty. But I think this should be a okay, just like it is. Look at that. There you go. There's some good macaroni and cheese right there. So I want you to stay tuned. Just as soon as the potatoes get done, uh, the meatloaf and everything, I'm going to put everything together. Uh, but there's one more thing that I'm going to show you. So I want you to stay tuned. Then we're going to put everything together. Alright everybody, welcome back. I got one more dish that I want to try to make and I'm going to saute some spinach and let me get the spinach out of the fridge. Now, in this uh, pan, I've got a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Now, I didn't have any uh, cloves of garlic, uh, but I got garlic powder in here and I got some salt in here. About a teaspoon of salt. Now, uh, I'm going to let this heat up and I'm using a pack of uh, spinach. Now, I got this on sale uh, at the store the other uh, day. And uh, I've not had spinach in a while and I love to eat spinach. I like it raw and I like it cooked. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me taste one. Mmm, love it. So, it's just a matter of sauteing this. Now, you might be thinking, my goodness, that's way too much spinach for a pan like this. But when you uh, cook it and stir it around, uh, it's going to wilt down. A lot. So, I'm going to get my tongs. Turn heat up just a little bit. And you just sort of want to stir it around. Notice I've got spinach flying everywhere on the stove. That's okay, my stove is clean. And you just want to stir it around until it, it's welded, until it's done. So it'll take a few minutes. So I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to show you the end result. All right, everybody. Just a few minutes have passed. And, and with just turning the spinach around like this with my tongs, you can tell it reduces to almost nothing. Now, if you wanted to, you could add like Parmesan cheese in here or anything. But I don't have Parmesan cheese. Uh, and I don't have anything crunchy to go in here. Uh, I'm going to serve it like it is. Okay? Now, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to get my celebration dinner together. And we're going to celebrate. Alright everybody, one hour and 15 minutes later, the meatloaf is done. Everything is looks great and I am so blessed, so thankful to be able to share with you my celebration dinner because i got a birthday coming up and I'm thankful to 
lived for 41 years on this earth, and I'm so thankful. Now, I'm going to get me a play, and I'm curious about this meatloaf. So I'm going to cut me a piece right here. Oh, it's falling apart. All right, so I'm going to sample it for you, so I want you to stay tuned. All right, everybody, it's time to celebrate. So I'm going to, uh, I've already said a blessing, so I'm going to uh, start with a meatloaf. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Really tender. Uh, you can hardly tell that I put mustard on the top, by the way. And it just tastes like a barbecue meatloaf. Mm. It's really, really good. I'm so thrilled. Usually, I wait a few minutes before I cut the meatloaf, but I'm hungry. We're all hungry here. So, uh, the meatloaf is good. I'm going to try this sauteed spinach. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Let me simply up mac and cheese for you. Everything just tastes so good. Mac and cheese. so good. Well, thanks for watching. Our time has come and gone. Stay tuned for more videos. Comments are welcome. Keep those subscribers coming. Have a blessed Sunday afternoon.